where each and every individual was granted and recognized as having inalienable rights given to them by their creator. Not given to them by the local warlord, but inalienable rights given to them by their creator for life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And what they did was that granted every one of us our own sovereignty, our own right to self-determination, our own right to be our own, our own sovereign. We didn't owe it to the government. They didn't give it to us. It was we were endowed by our creator with it. That was revolutionary, folks. Nobody had ever, no country, no government had ever recognized that for the individual. And then when they recognized that in the Declaration of Independence, they developed a set of laws which meant to ensure that it stayed that way called the Constitution. And the Constitution was meant to limit government to keep it from encroaching upon our individual sovereignty. And for the last 250 years, that government has tried to grow at the expense of we, the people. And as government got bigger, our rights and our individual ground as human beings, our sovereignty has been encroached upon. And right now, I will tell you that all these years later, more than two centuries later, the rights of we, the people, are more in peril than they have ever been before. Government has gotten too big, too intrusive, too expensive. And the concept of America as a land of the free and the home of the brave is in itself in peril by what they call the New World Order. Now, the New World Order is a, where they introduce free trade. Where it, for many, many years, for centuries, the United States stood for fair trade, where people were included in the calculation of all of our trade relationships. And in fair trade, when people uh, in some other country made goods that came to our borders, the duties and tariffs we put on those goods were, were directly tied to how that government treated its citizens where they were manufactured. And if, if they paid them a living wage and treated them with respect, we didn't put a lot of duties and tariffs on the goods when they hit our borders because they had taken a certain amount of money to manufacture those goods. But in 1989, George Bush took human rights off the list of factors in awarding trade status. They didn't take human rights from first to second or third, they took human rights mm -hmm. totally off the list. So that human rights are no longer involved in the calculation of our trade relationships and that's called free trade. And a minute, in, immediately, China got most favored nation trade status and all of a sudden their semi-slave produced goods came to our borders. We didn't put compensatory duties and tariffs on them. So they came in and they undersold us undersold our moms and pops, and decimated the middle class, and decimated the manufacturing base. And that's where our economy started heading south, especially in Kentucky. And so what's happened is that in order to have a free new world economy and a, uh, a global market, they have had to flatten the United States of America down and our citizens' rights because they can't afford to give constitution and due process to every other citizen on earth. So they're looking to abdicate ours. And the United States of America is in great problems. Both our political parties, both on the national and local level, have been bought off by the people I call the petrochemical, pharmaceutical, military, industrial, transnational, corporate fascist elite SOBs. <laughs> they see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. They see the Constitution and the Bill of Rights as impediments to the implementation of a new world order and global economy. And so, you know, I can't do anything about that on a national or international basis. But I can sure do something about that on a statewide basis. I have run for governor before, but this time I'm running for governor as an independent in November of 2011. Ladies and gentlemen, if you've been paying attention to politics in Kentucky, you know that we are in a state of dysfunctionality up in Frankfurt. You know, we could all come to a consensus about great ways to help the people, but if we presented it to the legislative process in Frankfurt, it would get shredded by the special interests up there and the partisanship. Both of the major parties, the leaders, have their horns locked up like two bull elk fighting over territory while the business of we the people lays dead in the dust. For the third time in six sessions, they couldn't get a budget passed into regular session. They had to go into special session to get a budget passed. And it was just as rife with bonding, with put in debt even more, us and our children and our grandchildren. We believe that as independents with no party affiliation, that we can use civility and statesmanship to, to invoke the best and brightest of both parties to step up and join in a people's caucus to finally address the perennial problems of the state. 
Neither party can produce a candidate can disengage the partisanship long enough to get this cooperation of the other party to get it done. We believe an independent governor who doesn't care who gets credit for doing what's right for the people is the answer to the present problems. So we are, my running mate D. Riley and I, are in fact candidates for governor and lieutenant governor next year, totally as independent. Last, last month, we got the endorsement of the United Mine Workers of America, the first time in their 120-year yeah. history that they have ever endorsed an independent. Yeah. That's 20,000 volunteers statewide. They did it a year early, and the vote was 50 to nothing on the council. So they're serious about it. They are the face of the working men and women of the state of Kentucky, union and non-union both. If you're a wage earner, if you have a check, that you earn and they take state income tax out on you, you are bearing the brunt of the operation of this state. Because I can tell you, the large corporations are not paying their fair share. It's time we took some of the load off the back of the working men and women and the wage earners and started making these corporations pay their fair share of the load. Your children and grandchildren are in great peril. In 1992, we started something called the, the, uh, the Economic Council. And that, that is where they give out tax incentives to locate jobs here in the state. The Council for Economic Development. That was in 1992. Gene Strong, who headed it from 92 up to 2008, said publicly in 1993, I have a plan for every Kentuckian. By the year 2012, 80% of Kentuckians are going to be earning $8 an hour. How do you like it so far? Who's going to buy the houses? Who's going to buy the cars? Who's going to start the families? Yeah, they're trying to get us down here to where it is a one world order in a global economy. They can't afford to have us, the recipients of the benefits and the processes of due process, the Constitution, and the Bill of Rights, they can't have us out here as examples to the rest of the world because they can't afford to give that to the rest of the world. They'll lose their dominion over them as they take our dominion over us. Well, I'm not going to let it happen in the state of Kentucky, folks. We might go down, but I'm going to go down fighting. Here's what I think we ought to do for the state of Kentucky. The first thing I'm going to do when I get to be governor is I'm going to ground every one of the helicopters hovering over the fields and gardens of the people of the state of Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. This is America, not Afghanistan, and we're not an occupied territory, and we're going to treat, quit treating our citizens like we are one. I want to see if America still has a pulse. The, the right to life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness is not a federal law. It's in the Declaration of Independence. It's not law. But the state of Kentucky... The very first section of our Constitution gives us a constitutional right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We're going to try to give life to that concept. I'm going to try to take the government out of your bedroom, your bloodstream, your brain, your bladder, your billfold, your back pocket, and the internet bullet board, and put it back in a little box where it belongs. Yeah. Out of our private lives. I'm going to get mar medical marijuana in the hands of every sick and dying person in the state of Kentucky. By God, it will save us, not only is it the humane thing to do, but it will save us between $500 million and a $1 billion a year in health care costs. I've run across thousands of people that would rather die at home in their bed with good marijuana than spend the last two weeks in a hospital stuck with tubes and all that pre prescription medicine uh, that makes zombies of us all. Yeah. I would also like to sue the pharmaceutical companies for about $500 million and make them come up with money for drug treatment programs in this state for all the cause of the harm that they've done to this state. The makers of, of OxyContin, which is the most deadly drug out there, got caught lying to the FDA and falsifying their scientific results, and the top three scientists in Purdue Pharma got convicted of federal crimes and the company had to pay $676 million in criminal fines in U.S. District Court over in Virginia. We need that money over here to start combating the drug, drug treatment programs for people instead of putting them in prison, for God's sake. A couple of other things, and I'll get off here. Next thing I'd like to do is offer tax incentives to existing corporations in the state to, to institute state-of-the-art environmental compliance with all of our laws and regulations. We lost 82,000 jobs in the state of Kentucky last year. And not only should we be trying to attract new jobs in here, but we should make sure and try to anchor the jobs that we do have here. Not only would that promote employment and improve our environment, but it ought to anchor the corporations so they'll stay in Kentucky rather than move out on a whim someplace else. <laughs> the next thing I'd like to do, when I ran for governor in 91, we spent 50, we spent 68% of the state budget on education. This year we're spending 59% of the state budget on education. 
we're defunding the very apparatus necessary to try to locate jobs here. So what I would like to do, and I think we can do it without raising taxes, I would like to give every one of our high school graduates in the state of Kentucky a $5,000 voucher for books, tuition, and fees to any institution of further learning in the state of Kentucky once they graduate from high school. Yeah. You know? it's, not for, it's not for pizza, rent, and beer. There's no creature comfort attached to it. But what it is, it's for, for books, tuition, and fees to truck driving school, cosmetology school, UK, UL, welding school, any school that will train them into employability. We need to start thinking about further education for everybody, not just higher education for a few. Because if we don't train the C&D students into employability, they're going to be drags on us all and drags on the economy. But that ought to induce worker training programs into the state. It ought to induce business colleges into the state. The money we spend for books, tuition, and fees will be taxable income to those corporations and training programs. It will, in fact, give kids out in these poor counties some vision beyond the high school diploma. Right now, all they see a high school diploma as being the, uh, an indication they don't have to go to school anymore. They don't have any vision. They're going to be stuck in that $8 an hour economy. What I'd like to do is let them give them some reason to talk with their mom and dad around the supper table about what are you going to do after you graduate from high school with your voucher. You're going to go to community college? You're going to go over here and get trained into something? I want to let these kids know that we have hope and we have vision for them and we're not going to abandon them out there. And the really beautiful part about it is not one dollar gets spent until that kid presents themselves to the training program to be trained. It's not like I'm taking your tax dollar and spending it to build a hundred billion dollar building and trying to entice people in to take advantage of it. Every dollar spent is after the child or the young man or woman makes that, makes that decision in their own head that they want to go get trained into something. So I think it's a really precise way to spend your tax dollar not only to promote education, but to promote employment and promote future employment. Folks, I don't have all the answers, but here's the key. Both major parties up there have made this, the government process in this state dysfunctional. The leadership has their horns locked up like two bull elk fighting over territory while our business lays dead in the dust. What we need is an independent governor. I'm totally independent. I'm not a third party. I don't want to replace the Democrat or Republican Party. I don't want to replace your local senator or representative. I need those people, and I don't want to threaten those people. We need them. But what we must do, neither party can promote, can produce a candidate, can disengage from the partisanship long enough to get the cooperation of the other side to get anything done. But an independent governor who doesn't care who gets credit for doing what's right and using the tools of civility and statesmanship stands the best chance to get the best and brightest and best intention of both parties to join together in a people's caucus to finally address the perennial problems of the state. That's what I'm offering myself, my running mate Dee Riley, beautiful lady, a, a, a redhead from Shelbyville who's never been arrested, so she brings real balance to the ticket. <laughs> <laughs> and we are totally committed to getting it done. I've got some bumper stickers up here. I've got some other material. If you'd like to have it, I'd be glad to hand it out to you. Ladies and gentlemen, I promise you this. All my mistakes will be honest mistakes, and you'll never, ever have another chance to more, vote more directly for freedom for you and your children and your family than you will next year in 2011, November, with Gatewood Galbraith and D. Riley for Governor and Lieutenant Governor. Thank you all very much. Now you have a hell of a band coming up and called Water, and they are terrific, so I know you enjoy yourself. Happy Fourth of July.